Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Lee from Merpe. Today, I would like to talk about the machine learning infrastructure using Feature Store and Vertex AI. So, I will talk like to talk about the machine learning platform, a project I have been involved in since I joined Merpain, from its design to development and operation, as well as the innovations we have made and the future work we will uh, we are envisioning for the future. Please understand there might be some inaccurate expression in my Japanese. So I will introduce myself first. I joined Yahoo Japan Corporation as a new graduate. At first, I was in charge in front-end development and operation of Yahoo Premium Services, but in my second year with the company, I changed my career to machine learning engineer and worked on modeling and data analysis for EC services and building machine learning infrastructure. I then joined Merpe as a machine learning engineer in September 2021, and I am now in charge of developing fraud detection models and machine learning infrastructure. So today's agenda is divided into four main parts. The background to the creation of the machine learning infrastructure, a description of the infrastructure, reflections on having developed and operating for a year, and finally, future initiatives. So starting with the background. So uh, various machine learning models have been created to prevent abuse of services. There is an alert filtering model to reduce the false positive rate of fraud detection models, a chargeback model to detect fraudulent purchases using credit cards, as well as suspicious account detection and suspicious behavior detection. There's a lot of additional development and updating of models, and sometimes multiple models are released in a short period of time. Recently, we have been working on an account-based chargeback model, a model to detect accounting hijacking and fictitious transactions. Fraud methods evolved on a daily basis, so it is essential to develop and realize models at a fast pace and to be able to counter them. As models are added and updated, the number of features required also increase. In the year between 2020 to 2021, the total number of feature dimensions increased by a factor of four. The data sources for these features are disparate and include big query tables, files on GCS, and spreadsheets. Some of the features were commonly used in multiple models. Next, so we need uh, to um, manage uh, the uh, multiple models in a low cost. And also, there are models used uh, in multiple methods, so uh, it is necessary to be able to reuse uh, the uh, features which are used once. So next, I will talk about the infrastructure. So this is the overview of the machine learning infrastructure platform. In the middle, there is a horizontal line connecting from left to right, from data source to feature store, vertex AI, and the output. This is the core part of the main ML pipeline logic. The parts connected above and below, such as the executor, version control, and monitoring, are the supporting parts of this core. I will first give the overview and then explain the more detailed implementation later on. So I will start with the core. The core is a function that acquires data, trains and infers models and stores the outputs. The feature store receives information from various data stores, sources and provides it to the model as features. Next, a service called Vertex AI in GCP is used to train and infer the model. Vertex AI has three main services. Vertex Pipelines runs specific ML pipelines. Vertex Endpoint deploys models and does online inference. And Vertex Models manages the models that can have been created. 
The final output stores the results of the models and inference where necessary for subsequent use. Now that the so now that the necessary ML pipeline logic has been implemented, training and inference can now be performed. However, this is still not enough. In extreme cases, if we were to run all of this manually, the operational cost would be high, and as the number of models increase, there is a risk that we would be too busy with daily operations to take on new challenges. The answer we came up with to solve this was to automate everything that can be automated. For example, the executor at the top left realizes the automatic execution of ML pipelines and can be controlled at the touch of a button for on-demand or periodic execution. The version control on the top right enables version control of the ML pipeline source code. So you might think, why don't you use you use GitHub for source code version management, but uh, we had our circumstances. We basically used the Kubeflow pipeline SDK to build an ML pipeline that can be run on Vertex AI. Due to this nature, we need to comply, compile the Python file of the ML pipeline logic once, and Vertex AI will use that compiled file to run the pipeline. Well, then you can compile and use the latest version of the code on GitHub. But the fact is that there is some logic that is commonly used between pipelines and some pipelines that are commonly used by other pipelines. In this case, if someone updates a commonly used pipeline, all the pipelines that use it will be affected. Therefore, if you have to check the operation of all pipelines every time you make a modification, it will not be easy to update. To solve this, we added version control to the compiled files. So this part will be explained in more detail later on. Last is monitoring. In the bottom right, uh, is a system that enables continuous monitoring of the system and models by aggregating the performance of models from BigQuery and notifying them via Slack or by notifying daily alerts via Slack so that we can respond quickly to any problems that may occur. We have a system in place that allows us to respond quickly when something happens. So that is Vertex AI and Feature Store. Let's take a closer look at these two services. Vertex AI is a managed machine learning platform that enables companies to rapidly deploy and maintain machine learning models. Vertex AI integrates existing ML services from Google Cloud into a single environment to efficiently build and manage the life cycle of ML projects. We chose this as our main platform for processing ML logic because it's a management managed service, so the operational costs are lower than on-premise, and it covers each life cycle of an ML project, and it provides a lot of useful tools. The feature store service we have adopted is often is an open source called, called Feast. Feast can manage and provide features for machine learning models in one place. It can absorb differences between various data sources and provide features with a consistent interface so ML engineers can acquire and use features without worrying about data pr processing. The difference between having a feature store and not having one is that without a feature store, so in this case, Independent data processing has to be done for each data source for each model. Even if there are features that are used redundantly bet between models, the same processing has to be done for each model each time. After the feature store has been implemented, features from different data sources such as BigQuery or GCS are incorporated to create a feature view. A feature view is a set of features for a domain. For example, a list of features for a product is represented as feature view 1, a list of features for transaction as feature view 2, etc. A feature service combines these feature views and provides the model with the necessary amount of features. The feature 
service can combine these feature views and provide the required amount of features to the model. As the feature store now manages features between the data source and model in one place, commonly used features in particular can be reused once developed and models can freely incorporate features using the feature service, reducing development costs. As an ML engineer, I can concentrate on developing models and the data engineer can concentrate on generating and managing features so there is a good division of labor. Next, I would like to talk about the parts of the machine learning infrastructure that we have developed and operated for a year and the parts that we felt were good and the part that we have worked on. The diagram on the right. So I will first explain about each element. The diagram on the right shows an example of a vertex pipeline. This diagram shows a supervised learning pipeline, which includes a series of steps from data acquisition, tuning, training, and finally, model evaluation. The term components here, re here refers, refers to the individual square blocks in the diagram, which represent a single task or logic. For example, the data division of a train test is one component. In addition, there are components that are commonly used in various pipelines, for example, the component that obtains the results of executing a big query, query is widely used in various pipelines. These are called common components. Common components is not an official concept, but was born out of our desire to use frequently used components in a common way in order to reduce development costs. The flow created by each component is a pipeline, i.e. one ML pipeline. Now that we have covered the, pre, uh, the prerequisites, let's return to the infrastructure. The first good thing we did was to create a common pipeline. As you know, the supervised learning flow for each model is roughly the same. You acquire data, train, tune as necessary, and evaluate. What differs from model to model is the feature list used, the definition of labels, the feature service, the range of hyperparameters, the model name etc. Therefore, the common training flow has been combined into a single pipeline. We manage the different parts of each model in a config file so that when the pipeline runs, it receives the config file as a parameter and creates the required model. This picture shows how this works. Each model has its own config file, and when you run the pipeline while referencing the contents of the config file, you can create the model you want. For example, if you enter the config file or mo model A and run the pipeline, you will be able to run model A, and config file for model B will generate model B. The biggest benefit of this is that you can create the model you want by referencing the contents to the config file. So you will be able to generate many models while uh, limiting the cost. If you want to try various things at the experimental stage or create multiple models in a short period of time, you can create models as long as you have the data, so you can quickly turn the PDCA cycle around or make fast release. Next, uh, we are sorry that the uh, original voice is not available. Okay, uh, we are doing the uh, Kubeflow pipeline SDK. And I said before that you need to compile the pipeline logic, but actually you need to compile the components as well. The flow we'll be using the SDK is first you define the logic of each component. For example, in this diagram, we define the train function and implement each learning logic of the model. After defining, we compile the Python function. Then, 
the next time the pipeline logic is implemented, the previously compiled YAML files, YAML files can be read as uh, components files. After reading the files, we build the pipeline flow. And finally, the pipeline is compiled again so that Vertex AI can run. In other words, we need two compiles. The problem with this is that if you want to change a common component or a common pipeline, for example, if you want to add a parameter or if you want to add a component to the supervised learning pipeline, then this will affect other components, so other models. So therefore, uh, it will be difficult to modify. If we use it as it is, for example, if an engineer A says that he she wants to update this component, then the engineer B uh, has to respond to that update uh, right away. Otherwise, the pipeline will fail. So we thought that the, uh, what we, what we could do is that, like a Python package that we often use, this server uses version 1.0 and the other server uses version 2.0. The Although the same packages, but they use different versions, so they don't affect each other. And if we can realize it, then when the ML engineer A wants to update the component, then the engineer B can say, oh, well, use the previous, we will um, use the previous version, so you can go ahead and update it. So the answer we came up with was to do the version control on the compiled files. We decided to separate versions for each GCS path. Since we are saving and referencing files on GCS, for example, when we compile a file and upload it to GCS, we specify the path name with 0.1 or 0.2. So now you can specify different paths to run different versions of the pipeline when you refer to them. So the system is as described in the diagram. So when the source code is updated on the GitHub, the compiled file will be uploaded to GCS via GitHub Actions. So the common components on the left and the pipeline on the right are separated by version. So, and this time, uh, when I look at the pipeline diagram on the right, in the version of 0.5.0, there were ML pipeline and the ML pipeline A and ML pipeline B and train pipeline. And in 0.6.0, ML pipeline C was added. The point here is that ML pipeline A and B haven't been changed. In other words, C was just added. So we adopted the way of saving the current state of all pipelines in the one version, so just like a snapshot. So from a file saving perspective, it is redundant because the same file is saved many times, but this is definitely easier to use. And this is what we call one for all versioning. And you can handle common components in the same way you can specify a different uh, version of a common components for the pipeline and use it. So if there is any change here, if the version is upgraded, the file you are using now will not be lost. So you can use the existing file and you can save the changed part in the path of the new version and use it. So you can develop and operate without affecting each other. To summarize, we use a one-for-all versioning to manage components and pipeline versions. Components and pipelines are compiled and uploaded on GCS, so we can use different GCS paths for version control. Third point is the automation of the execution. Each pipeline has different requirements for execution. For example, train pipeline needs to be executed on demand when data drift occurs and model performance drops. 
predict pipeline needs to be executed on a daily or near on an hourly basis, and common pipelines need to be able to be executed by specifying the different config files. And uh, this is the system that realized this. So let's look at the bottom half first. Uh, I built a cloud run using the main.pi and the GitHub actions. And in the cloud run, the fast API is running and it receives requests and refers to the necessary pipeline files on the GCS and execute them with Vertex AI. And the request comes from the top half. The uh, cloud scheduler is configured first. And the cloud scheduler mainly manages which pipeline is executed when. So each pipeline has its own scheduler.env, the path of the pipeline, the path of the config file, Kuron, uh, uh, when you want to execute on periodic basis, are uh, written in it. Then we use the GitHub Actions to set up the execution pattern of the pipeline in the cloud scheduler. If it was is a periodical execution, it will send a message to the PubSub at the time setting the Kurum. The content of the a message can be the pipeline path, setting the scheduler, or .m, or the name of the pipeline, or the config file. PubSub pushes the received message to the cloud run. So cloud run can receive messages from PubSub and execute the pipeline they need. If we want on-demand execution, you usually deactivate the cloud scheduler and activate it only when you need it, and then press the Run Now button to execute the train pipeline or the pipeline you, need, you want to execute on-demand. So by doing that, uh, we can control on-demand execution, periodic execution, and, uh, and execution with a different config file with the push of a button by using the cloud scheduler and the pops up together. Next is continuous A-B testing. When the model is updated, it is necessary to do A-B tests, and we automated this as well. The Vertex AI endpoint on the right side can also do inference from the endpoints after deploying the model. Besides that, we also provide a traffic split feature, which allows you to deploy up to two models to a single endpoint. For example, deploy model A and model B to one endpoint for performance evaluation. And if model N wins, then you can complete the A-B test by increasing model A from 50% to 100% of traffic. Of course, you can set endpoints manually, but I wanted it to reduce operational cost by automating and also to reduce the human errors by manual setting. So we built a config file for the endpoints and write the model we want want to deploy to the endpoints and their settings in it, and then deploy to the endpoints using the GitHub Actions. So that's the models you want are deployed in the state you want. Here too, a single file can automatically control the status of the endpoints, which also lowers the hurdle for A-B testing. And finally, by notifying the execution status of pipelines and the performance of models through Slack integration, we DRI's monitoring. So far, I talked about the points and the parts we devised to reduce development operation cost. And now I'd like to talk about the areas uh, we would like to work on in the future. The first point that I'd like to work on is the ex ex extension of the feature store. The feature store has been used to store the batch ingested uh, data uh, on the offline store and to learn models from the data in the past. 
So in the future, we'd like to uh, incorporate stream ingest features such as Kafka, since there is a growing demand for real-time inference. To be more specific, I'd like to store stream ingested data in an offline store and work with the vertex endpoints to achieve inference of models using real-time data. And the inference result will be stored in a BigQuery or the GCS Cloud Spanner for subsequent use. The, the difficult point here, or the point of uncertainty, is the upgrading of the Feast. Feast is open source with a fairly active community, so it is growing rapidly. I think one of the challenges will be to keep up with the upgraded grade and find the balance between the stable operation in the production environment and the introduction of new features, since some of the features are still in alpha, such as stream ingest and other features. So next, I want to automate flows for data drift detection and retraining. So this one is divided into two parts. The left part is the data drift detection, and the right part is the relearning. In the data and the drift detection, I'm going to use the monitoring functionality provided by Bartex AI. And I will use the feature and the labels at the time of a training as a baseline and compare the latest features and the label when inferring at the endpoints. The, if the distance between the statistical, statistical distribution of the two feature or labels exceeds a certain threshold, this will be a different distribution. So we will determine that the drift has occurred. If we can detect that drift has occurred, we go into the retraining flow on the right. And here we first notify that data drift has occurred by Slack. Also, the retraining vertex AI uh, pipeline runs to generate the model. We put out the config files of the generated model by pull request to ask engineers to review them. In otherwise, the decision to actually use the new model is made by manually by human beings. Then when the pull requests are approved, we match them, develop the new model to the vertex endpoints and update the model or run the A-B test. And we are still working on this and that design may change in the future. So this concludes my presentation. As for flood detection, business requirements are changing rapidly, so we have created a machine learning platform that can create and deploy models quickly and can be easily operated even if there are hundreds of models. And I believe that this platform can be adapted to an environment where business requirement changes as well. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay, hello everyone. So from here, uh, we would uh, like to have a Q&A session uh, for the topic, uh, the ML platform uh, using feature store and Vertex AI. My name is to Daisuke Torigoi, and I will be the moderator. And I belong to the uh, Merpe Fraud Prevention ML team, and I'm an engineering manager. So, uh, so far we have not received any questions, uh, but we would like to entertain questions from the viewers. So we are still uh, soliciting uh, questions, so uh, please uh, write in your question uh, in either YouTube or Twitter. Live chat. So, Lee San, thank you very much for your presentation. And since there are no questions coming uh, from the audience yet, I have one question for you. So listening to your presentation, I could understand the benefits of using the feature store. But uh, there might be some challenges on using feature store. So uh, according to you, what are the uh, demerits on using feature store? So as I mentioned earlier, the feature store service, we are using Feast. 
uh, as a service, and this is open source, and it is updated very frequently. So we have to keep up with the updates, and also there's no customer support, so the learning cost is quite high. And the features that we want to use and the features in the roadmap are still in alpha status. So we cannot use those features in production yet. So we need to grow together with Feast. So that is quite challenging. I see. So you grew, uh, you grow with the feature. Thank you. Right, there are not so many use cases yet, although it is growing a little bit, but not so much yet. So, so you grow with the feature store. Yeah. Thank you very much. Next. Yeah, I will ask you the, this question now. So feature stores or the Vertex AI are used. So it sounds like the um, development is difficult. And also there are already existing platforms. So it will cost you uh, to replace them. So, but you overcame all this problem and decided to implement this. But why did you decide that? Well, the fraud methodologies and the fraud damage are growing, so we needed to cope with it as soon as possible. In order to do that, we, you know, we, we have to develop the models to cope with the different flood. But you want to create the large models or the maintain them, then the issue will be the operation cost. So while we are reducing the operation costs, we need to develop fast and we need to respond to the fraud, new fraud quickly. So in order to do so, we needed a new platform. So that was a main reason. And when there are multiple uh, models and there are some common features or the unique features, so you have to upgrade how to manage the features. And also the demands will increase going forward. So therefore, Feast online stores, uh, when, when I look into the new versions of the Feast online store, I found out that the difficulty of the implementation was reduced. So that was also part of the growth of the feed. A feast. So that's why we decided to implement them. Thank you very much. So I think we have one question from the floor. So I would like to read it out. So compared to other ML pipelines, what is the biggest benefit of feast? So maybe you have uh, partial, partly answered the questions already, uh, but uh, we please reiterate the benefits of using Feast. Feast is simply a, manage, a platform which manages the data features. So especially uh, if there are features used commonly between multiple models, without Feast, uh, you need to m process the data separately, and you need to prepare the data uh, separately for each model. But in Feast, if you created a feature in model A, and if model B wants to use the same feature, you don't need to uh, re develop that from scratch. You can reuse what model A was using. So it makes it easier to manage the features and the cost goes down. And another point, as an ML engineer, the da rather than data ETL, but uh, we want to focus on tuning the models rather data scientists and uh, ML engineer can have a clear uh, division of labor. Data scientists can use Feast and they can put in lots of features there. And ML engineer can use the data that is available to build models 
or improve models quickly and to uh, really uh, run this cycle in a high speed. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, uh, that since time is limited, but uh, we have another question from the audience regarding a feature store. So, in this presentation, why the online store is necessary for feature store? From offline store, why you don't uh, fetch the data directly from the offline store? What's about this? It's a very uh, good question. It's a great question uh, with the insight. It touches the core of this feature store. The, the reason why that we need the online is simply put, the stream data can be used as an input. Kafka and the stream data can be ingested by doing that real-time in inference can be done easily. The data fetch from the offline store can be done as well. But it's a periodic execution, like uh, every minute. I if you synchronize them in every minute, then management of the data becomes difficult or the cost will be increased. So, categorized from the offline store to the online stores uh, are done only for the non real time data, for example. Customers' transaction, customers ID, transaction ID, or age. If such information can be is, is set one time, it won't change real time. So then we can fetch those data from offline store, and then only the uh, uh, real time uh, data can be fetched from the online store. So that we we do the real time inference. Uh, you can have the both. Uh, online data as well as the offline data. So you can uh, in, do the inference faster than the batch inference. Okay, thank you very much. So I think uh, everything's okay. So if you have any other points uh, you would like to make, uh, please comment on the chat. So we only have two minutes left. So I would like to give, uh, add to the previous response about when ingesting offline data or fetching data from offline store or data going into the online stream, if there are duplicate data between these two, there are such duplicate data. Same data uh, comes in in the batch and also in the stream. So how can you align these two types of data? That is a challenge for us right now. What we do is data which comes in as a stream and data fetched from offline store, we separate them. And it's the data which must be real time will be uh, coming from the uh, stream and other data will be fetched from offline to avert conflicts. Uh, but uh, going forward, if there is collision or duplication, this is a challenge on how we can handle that. Okay, thank you very much, Lee San. So we're exactly on time. So we would like to conclude the QA session. Uh, please uh, fill in the questionnaire. Uh, thank you very much uh, for viewing. Thank you.